when I first moved to the US, I lived in your Blinda Orange County, which is kind of all the people that um that were in Orange County and stuff like that, your Blinda, they all kind of got pushed to come out to this area. So when you actually meet a lot of people and start to become a local here, you realize all your like what what I'd say our parents, friends and stuff, if I was relating it to that, they are all from Orange County, you know, your Belinda and that. Um, so uh, they all got pushed out here. So I think for me, like I when I first moved here, I lived with a sponsor in Brea uh, for a few years and then on and off. And then I had an apartment in Temecula. Um, so I was coming out here and I was staying out here. And then I uh, one of my ex-girlfriends, I lived with her family in your Belinda. So... We were like bouncing back and forth between a like a, a, an ap- having an apartment. Then I'd travel on, I'd get out of that after a three to six month lease, and then go on Nitro Circus, and I'd be touring around the world. And then I'd come back, and we'd I'd be staying with her family for a few. I'd end up staying there for a few years, but like it was helpful back then because I was trying to I was trying to find something where I could live, and like I would come out and ride with a fellow rider out here in. Temecula wine country and I always like I just living in your blender and that just the freeways like driving to Parla Raceway to ride the ramps or going to Temecula to ride the ramps was like I mean if it's a good day with no traffic and you're going against the traffic you would be into uh, you'd be from your blender to Temecula within like an hour to Parla like an hour and a half and then if you timed it wrong, it was like three hours one way or two and a half. Like, it's just ridiculous. Uh-huh. So um, doing that on the 91 freeway and the 15, I really just had to, I, you know, at the time, I didn't have a lot of money. So I was always just trying to, like, figure out, like, renting or staying with my ex's family and things like that, going back and forth. And then kind of 2016 got to a good point in my career where with sponsors and things like that and um, was able to you know save some money and get a deposit for a property or a house and most of the riders like your madison and twitch and guys like that they all live like right in temecula like they have courses like smaller backyard courses but like they have courses right in temecula like it's crazy that they they're like almost grandfathered in to where they kind of get away with it in a sense um and i didn't even want to go near that like i didn't like i didn't have the money to go near that anyway but like it's just you just have a lot more rules and regulations in there and people watching you all the time and out where i am you can kind of get away with a little bit more and have a bit more freedom everyone out here has a lot more acreage so like five acres is kind of a minimum but most people have 10 20 acres out here and up so it's kind of a little bit more rural where it to 2300 feet where i am so i'm a little bit higher altitude than temecula and just a lot nicer out here more countryside so for us to get to town it takes us like 30 minutes so it's kind of it's kind of a drive out here it's not like if you were like if you were to to do a straight line as a crow flies you know it'd be a lot quicker but it's just like back roads all through wine country so it's just a little little bit more slow pace and you got all the idiots that come out of the wineries and stuff from LA and they just don't know what direction they're going or yeah just probably wasted or something who knows just <laughs> but um yeah what I love age it. were you when you brought the property like, what's that what age were you when you brought the property what was I uh it was like what seven eight it was 2016 so what's that seven years ago eight years ago seven years ago eight years I'd be like 25 Right, no, young. 25, yeah, something like that. And you yeah. you did, like, you've never, not in a bad way, but you've never actually had to work just a real proper nine to five. Like, this is all been done by riding bikes. Um. Yeah, no, like, I guess, like, how, what do you call that? Like, I've worked, right? Like, I've, Every like, I worked, I worked, I worked when I was, uh, like, before I came to America, I was working in a uh, gravel pit, uh, working for this company in, just out of Yarrawonga, um, oh. what are they, Goldman's, I think they're called, the big, um, they're between Cobram and Yarrawonga. Yeah. And um, I was working for them to make money and obviously like growing up, like I worked when I when I got out of school at 15, 
I was like 14 to 9 months I worked as a welder at a, uh I didn't have an apprenticeship I was just a just a I don't know what would you call it tradie just on yeah. the tools helping um learning kind of learning the gig without going to a to a trade school but um that was all to support my racing at home really and then um and then I had to save some money before I came to my first X games in 2000 and Ten, so I think I came over with like one thousand five hundred Aussie dollars to my name. Um, I had so I didn't really have much money. I had like a Toyota yeah, well, Ace and a bike at home, um, like a Yamaha four hundred and fifty. I was paying off at that time, and I had a two hundred and fifty two stroke I brought off cam. Yeah. And then um, so I had really no money to my name. I got supply. I uh, Sam Moore from Fist bought me a plane ticket. Um, so I just had some companies from Oz that helped me get over here. But yeah, I came over here with nothing. No, like yeah, one thousand five hundred Aussie dollars. At that time, it was kind of closer. The dollar was a little closer, I think. So that was good. But um, yeah, no, everything I've done over here has been uh, been just from riding dirt bikes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah so yeah, can't can't complain. It's definitely definitely been a good 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 life and yeah, good trip. So yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah I mean, it's, it's just impressive, like, for, for, say, the average person that listens to this and, and thinks of, like, how could I ever own a property in America by age yeah. five, been living there full time, and it's like, it would seem like it's impossible. You went from, like, the smallest town ever, a couple yeah. of points here and there, made it on the bikes, next thing you're, you're a US citizen, basically. I think, uh, I wish I was a citizen. <laughs> oh, we won't go there. Like, the old, in your arm. But, uh... <laughs> the um that's that's a different story for later but uh <laughs> but um yeah i think like like some of it for me um i don't know like at eight years old i had the american flag on my wall i always wanted to be in the u.s and as you know like racing motocross that was where i really wanted to be growing up looking up to certain riders and wanting to be in the united states racing and seeing certain guys I raced against coming over and, and and going to America at a young age and stuff like that really wanted me to be here racing. And that was kind of my career path. And then obviously we can dive into that, but just like getting getting the opportunity to come to X Games and that was like my in, right? Like I got to come to X Games in 2010 uh, for, for, for Best Whip as a freestyle rider. And then getting my foot in the jo- door, you know, a lot of dudes from Australia can either hold on to that X Games and they can travel back and forth. But, like, I didn't have the money to go back and forth. So I had to, like, kind of, like, stay here until Tool was going back with Nitro Circus and I could go back home. And I think a lot of Aussies, um, they either – want to live the american dream for a bit but they don't want to stay here and do it but you if you want to be in america and you want to make a career out of riding a dirt bike in america you can't bounce back and forth it's just not going to work like you can try as hard as you want but as soon as you go home you've forgotten about Mm. right so a lot of the biggest problems and like something that i'd say to anyone that wants to come to the united states and make a career is don't go home like as soon as you go home, you'll lose it all. And, like, you'll just, yeah. unless you've got something really good happening to where you come back and then you start again. But you kind of have to stay here and tough it out. So, like, for the first, like, what, two, three years was really cool because I was in America. But people don't realize how hard it is to live in another country. As much as it all looks fruity and stuff on social media and that, when you move somewhere else, like, growing up where we grew up, like you can call somebody when you're on the side of the road and they'll come and help you or you're moving houses and somebody will help you. And like you have good mates that you've grown up with going to school with and things like that where when you move halfway around the world, there's no one there for you. Like yeah. I've been in a lot of relationships. Um, obviously, I like liked dating and having a girlfriend and stuff all through my life. But like also when you live halfway around the world, if you don't have somebody in your life, whether it's a best mate or a girlfriend or a wife or a figure that's like that, when you crash and your your parents, like I moved here when I was 18 years old. So like yeah. my parents are at home in Australia, right? And I'm getting messed up on dirt bikes over here and going to hospital. And like, that's a big, 
that's a really hard, like really hard thing to deal with. You know, when your car breaks down the side of the road, who do you call? So, and then, and then, yeah, you build relationships with dirt bike people. People come and go in that world. People get out of it. People come into it and relationships, you can build good relationships, but they just take a lot longer to build, right? So, yeah, it's definitely not easy. Yeah. But yeah, as an Aussie <laughs> coming over here, I feel like a lot of Aussies really don't give it their, their full potential, right? I don't think they, they don't embrace it. They don't want to live in America or they want to live in America just for the fruits, but they don't want to live here in a sense, if yeah. that makes sense, right? They want like, they want to make the money. They want to make the sponsors, but then do they see themselves being here long term, right? And and that's the thing too, right? Like um, I'm now married with a kid to an American. So it's like, what do you, you meet somebody and t- you meet people and people come into your life. So it's like, where do you, like you know, do they want to move back to australia no so do you want to be here or where do you want to be what do you want to do so like you have to like figure navigate a different a different place and different people and yeah your life changes a lot so yeah it's it's interesting for sure <laughs> yeah it's impressive mate like just the just the the effort that goes in just to have like the average life to have a job mental is- state like just mentally what goes yeah. into it yeah, yeah absolutely and you basically yeah. like you start from scratch in everything you do when you move to another country yeah. you did all that yeah. from age 18 till 25 yeah 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 it's pretty wild 